Now, the complete history of gangs in the Bronx is long and complex. So for the sake of simplicity, in this story, we will simply focus on a handful of relevant street crews that have made a significant impact in the recent Bronx drill music scene. However, the formation of these crews predates the Bronx drill scene by many years. Many of the names of gangs that you're going to hear referenced in Bronx drill music weren't even around a decade or so ago, as they evolved and splintered off from other crews as the result of internal and external conflicts between their members. One early crew hailing from the the Cortland Ave area was known as YGFC, or the Young Gunners from Cortland. This crew was a subset of a much larger gang called the YGs, or Young Gunners. The YGs apparently started around 2003 and was primarily based in two project buildings, the Mott Haven Houses and the Patterson Houses, with another set later popping up in the Bronx's River Park Towers, or RPT projects, around 2010. And the leader of the YGs back in the day was a man named Ju Hef, real name Jutha Perez, an occasional rapper as well as a respected street figure. Sadly, however, Ju Hef was not able to keep his troops in the street united for long, apparently in the midst of a disagreement between high-ranking members including a man named Melly Mel Baller, would see several members branching off and making their own crew. This would eventually see the Young Gunners from Cortland, or YGFC, breaking off from the YGs altogether and dropping the Y from their name, becoming the GFC, or God's Favourite Children. At a certain point, they became OGFC, or the original Goons from Cortland, before eventually simplifying and settling on OGs, or original goons. So the OGs, with their beginnings in the Young Gunners from Cortland, naturally hail from Cortland Ave. This area has a reputation as being one of the most dangerous hoods in the Bronx, with three main housing projects generally affiliated with the OGs. Melrose Houses, Jackson Houses, and Morrisania, aka Vietnam. These were three notorious blocks known to the authorities for their gang activity, with all three buildings actually being targeted in a 2009 federal indictment named Operation Rotten Apple, which took 37 drug pushers off the streets from these very buildings, charging a total of 53 gang members after a year-long undercover operation. Melly Mel Baller, the OG's pioneer who I mentioned before, formerly of the YG's, would get himself convicted in a big case too, a case which was apparently made much easier by a great deal of self-snitching on his own personal face. Facebook profile. This was a landmark case where apparently a judge ruled that it's legal for a snitch to use evidence that was gained from snooping on friends-only Facebook posts. Apparently Melly Mel Baller had written posts on Facebook marked for friends-only where he would suggest that he buys drugs in quantities as large as 600 grams and claiming to have had over 100 people killed. Melly Mel would ultimately be convicted, receiving a sentence of life plus 420 months. And sadly for the OGs, while their affiliates were fighting for their lives in court, younger members were fighting for their lives in the streets. On April the 16th, 2012, a large group of YG's members were out drinking. And at a certain point, a debate breaks out over who puts in the most work for the gang. No one could agree who was the toughest, so at a certain point, they decided to settle the argument, head into a rival territory, and go and find some ops. With the YG's walking to the OG's territory in the Melrose houses. And when they got there, they spotted a 16-year-old OG's member by the name of Noah Baller, real name Moises Laura. The YG's proceeded to physically attack Noah in a brutal fashion, around 20 grown men stomping out one 16-year-old boy. Sadly, he didn't stand a chance and was ultimately stomped to death outside of his own building and left to die in a pool of his own blood. Noah's name has been remembered in the streets of the Bronx for both good and bad reasons. With OGs on his side continuing to tribute him in songs and regularly visiting his graveside, while the opposition on the YG side would regularly diss him saying that they smoke him, with the biggest drill rapper from the YGs currently, D Thang even going as far as to post a picture of a bloodstained pair of Air Force One on Instagram telling his followers that these shoes are the Noah's. Anywho, only a year after Noah's death, Ju Hef, the early pioneer of the YGs, would meet a tragic end too. In 2013, Ju Hef was killed by a man called Melvin Davis after a fight in the Tropicana nightclub. After a mass brawl between the YGs and another street crew called Young Flybridge from Highbridge would end with Ju Hef being beaten in the head with a hookah pipe. This left him in a coma and he would sadly lose his life only a week later. The gang from Highbridge while not officially a part of the OGs, were known to affiliate with some of their members, with some believing that the killing of Ju Hef did have some connection over what had happened to Noah previously. Despite not being responsible for the killing directly, the YG's main rivals, the OGs, would take this opportunity to clown their rivals for losing their leader. Story goes that OGs members even went so far as to urinate on the mural for Ju Hef 
a massive sign of disrespect. Anywho, with Zhu Hef out of the picture, the YGs would continue forward, but naturally, the authorities would be keeping a close eye on them. This would eventually lead to two crews, the YGs and the 18th Park Gang, being targeted in a 2015 criminal indictment that would hit 48 Bronx-based gang members. This case would take 22 members of the YGs off the streets, apparently detailing 30 non-fatal shootings, as well as three homicides, including the killing of Noah. A senior YGs member named William Bracey, aka Rail, would get 33 years for his role in that murder. Murder, with another YG's member, Ant Flocker, real name Anthony Reddick, also pleading guilty to taking part in the murder of Noah. Because of their violent behaviour in the street, the YG's had attracted a lot of attention from the authorities, and that would continue as the years went on. Another 2016 indictment targeted members of the YG's, charging around 120 people. At the time, this was the largest gang takedown in New York history, and the indictment would accuse the gang of being involved in at least eight murders, including a 92-year-old innocent bystander killed in her own home by a stray bullet. And according to this indictment, over the course of this entire feud, an alleged 1,800 shots had been fired. Frankly, the YGs, the OGs, and other street gangs had the Bronx looking like a literal war zone throughout the 2000s and 2010s. But while the older members were getting put behind bars or losing their lives, a new generation of young gangbangers desperate for the limelight would soon emerge. Hardened by the bloodshed witnessed at the hands of their olders, and inspired by the drill music blowing up over in the city of Chicago. And the YGs and OGs affiliated rappers that would emerge in the 2020s would bring an incredible amount of creativity to the streets of the Bronx. With these young Bronx drill rappers, creating viral anthems amid a backdrop of shootings and violence in the borough they grew up in. 